Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's fireside chat on the building blocks for creating a successful startup on Cello. I am Rachel Jacob from Upright, and I'll be moderating today's chat. And so throughout the day, we've heard from many great companies and new infrastructure that is being built in the Web3 space. So we wanted to take 15 minutes to talk about um, some things to keep in mind when launching your project. And so if you've been inspired um, to do so, um, or uh, already building a project, um, we uh, wanted to uh, speak about just a couple of things uh, that alone here from Upright and Arno Simere from Tatum will walk us through to keep in mind. So um, would you like to first introduce yourselves? Yes, thank you so much, Rachel, and hello, Miami. My name is uh, Alon Shavit, and I'm the uh, managing uh, director and co-founder of Upright. Upright is the company that runs Cello Camp, which is an eight-week virtual acceleration and mentorship program for the Cello ecosystem. And for those of you who are new to Cello, Cello is a carbon negative mobile first blockchain, which is EVM compatible, and it allows to uh, uh, developers to create uh, applications that are cross-border and dApps uh, for financial services. And it became the home to many uh, projects in the refi space, the regenerative finance um, space, which I would like to uh, speak about uh, later in uh, this uh, talk. So I'm super excited to be here with you and I'm uh, uh, waiting to share with you some of our insights from working with hundreds of startups all over the world and helping them uh, bring their projects to market in the last three years. Thank you, Rachel, Elon. Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Arno. I'm the head of sales and partnership at a company called Tatum. We are the leading blockchain developer platform. So our mission at its core is to empower any developers, whether you are a very experienced Web3 dev or someone in Web2 sitting at a Fortune 500 who has been tasked by building the first blockchain app. So we're going to empower you with a set of tools from blockchain API, SDK, node infrastructure to build any application that you want. Uh, and we do that in a way that's super easy, safe, secure. And the way our entire framework is built, we're trying to abstract you from the complexity, all the chains, and all the different languages so you can do it very fast. Um, our framework is available across 60 different chains, layer one, layer two, EVM, non-EVM. Uh, we've been actually partnering with Celo for a number of years, and you can use Tatum to, to build on Celo. Now, you may not have heard about us, uh, but um, we raised $40 million uh, just recently. There is about 120,000 Web3 projects and company that are built using Tatum. So let's just say if you buy an asset on an exchange, if you mint an NFTs, if you're Web3, if you're playing a Web3 game, there's a very, very high chance that somewhere in the back, this project is using some of our developer tooling. And uh, super excited to be here. I'm also a Miami resident, so good to see some exciting web-free development here in our great city. Thank you so much, Alone and Arno. Um, so for our first topic, um, we spend a lot of time when working with founders in Cello Camp, um, thinking about what a project um, needs to do to succeed, and we get lots of questions around this topic. We can spend hours talking about it, but we really only have five minutes to do so. So um, what would both of you say from your experiences are the key elements necessary to launch a successful Web3 project in today's market? All right, so I will say that clearly the first element is the team, who are the people that are working on the project. So uh, to make sure that you are working with people that complements you in their skill set and also work on your own uh, skills, 
and uh, working on your own internal why. Why are you working on the project? Making sure that the team is the right team uh, to build this uh, product and bringing it to market. You have to have the conviction, the discipline, and the leadership qualities uh, to manage the team. And at Cello Camp, we are trying to help with these uh, topics uh, by a weekly workshop that we uh, have that includes meditation and mindfulness exercises to help founders home in on their unique purpose and also to work on their communication skills that are often overlooked. The second element I want to point out is the idea. Um, you have to have a good project idea, project that solves a problem that is actually in high demand to be solved. And to do so, I highly encourage you to, um, uh, to explore communities uh, of Web3 projects that you align with their mission. Uh, the Web3 space is very inviting and to uh, do the proper research to understand what work have already been done and to uh, build on top of that. Uh, the Web3 space is, works like uh, Lego blocks and maybe you'll find your co-founders uh, along this uh, journey. And uh, the last piece is the execution, which is uh, also very, very important. And you, we can break down execution into the design and implementation of the product, into the go-to-market strategies, and how you leverage the community to uh, test your project and to get their correct feedback, especially in the early stages, and also the culture of your team. Uh, these are all uh, needs to be developed in the early stages when you work on your MVP, and we are trying to help with that by uh, providing workshops from partners like uh, Coinbase Cloud, Tatum, here, uh, um, IDO, uh, Flory Ventures and many other great organizations that provide uh, invaluable resources throughout uh, the program. Um, yeah, and I'm sure that uh, Arno can uh, elaborate on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so at Tatum, we, we speak to about 40 to 50 new projects every week, right? Because especially for, for new founders who are looking to build a new project, they are looking for developer toolings, right? How are you going to, which tech stack are you going to use in blockchain to do so? So quite frankly, they, they tend to focus too much on the technology. And what I mean by that is that there are a number of tools nowadays that can help you accelerate your, your development, abstract you from the complexity of all the chains that we're using. But there, there was a lady earlier that, um, and she was from a VC, I believe, and she said something very true is like, pitch me without using the term blockchain, right? And founders, quite often, they, you know, they fumble because behind a great product, there's not necessarily a market. So most of the founders that we meet outside of helping them on, on the blockchain development side of things, we really encourage you to think about what's your ideal customer profile? Uh, what's your total addressable market? How are you different from your competition? For, Many of you that might sound like something that's very basic. Like I come from a SaaS tech startup background. We would never show up to a VC meeting without this, you know, by heart. But I think quite often we think that building a great product and knowing everything about the blockchain doesn't translate into a successful company. And I think we have also to be very comfortable in explaining how we're going to monetize this product. <laughs> Quite often, some, some people are this you know, anxiety when it comes to sales and money and everything should be free. No, nothing is free in blockchain or in life. Uh, believe me, I'm a big believer in you know, uh, having open source services, but as a founder, um, from ideation to market, the difference is how you build a healthy company. How do you monetize? And quite often, this is a very much um, overlooked. Your, your end customer, might not care which blockchains you have choose. If you use Uber today and you send a text message to the driver, whether you are in Paris, in Miami, in Bogota, the driver receives a text message. The end user doesn't care if you have Verizon, at and it just works. So which next works you have used to do that, they don't really care. So I think we need to like put away a little bit the technical side of blockchain and 
I'm a developer, so it hurts me even to say that. But I think to uh, get to massive adoption, we do have to make it easier for end user to understand this product, and you should know your market and your product better than anybody. All right, thank you so much, Arno and Alone, for very valuable insights. Um, so for our next uh, topic that we'd love to discuss is, what do you both think are the trends that founders need to look at and build for in the next cycle? All right, very fun uh, question. So we review around 700 uh, applications a year. So we see projects around DeFi, uh, the creator economy, gaming. And I want to highlight a, a couple of uh, trends. And the first one being payments, banking, and that includes CBDC, uh, Central Bank Digital Currency. And um, the way I look at it, Crypto and DLT, distributed ledgers, can provide a way to decouple the re regulatory, custodial, and uh, the monetary aspects of, um, of a monetary uh, system. And that could unlock a lot of innovation uh, around payments. You can imagine uh, getting, pay, getting your salary uh, uh, by the, uh, day by day or by the hour instead of uh, once every two weeks or, or once uh, a month. You can imagine on-chain credit, on-chain uh, lending, and uh, many, many uh, features. I can uh, also uh, point out an experiment that has been done in uh, Israel with the uh, central bank where um, they uh, created a, a digital currency and were able to distribute it through a financial service provider, providers uh, directly to the uh, customers. And I think that could really unlock a lot of uh, innovation and make um, banks and um, uh, apps serve many more users. A lot of uh, people are still unbanked in the world. And the other trend is refi, regenerative finance. And the goal of refi is to create a financial system that not only doesn't harm, uh, but actually contributes to the restoration of nature and communities and projects uh, around climate, um, carbon credits, um, renewable energy are uh, something that really unites uh, I think a lot of projects in the Web3 uh, space and in the uh, Alliance for Prosperity in uh, CELO. So the Alliance for Prosperity includes more than 200 companies, companies like Mercy Corps, uh, Grameen Foundation, the World Food Program, Coinbase, uh, Deutsche Telekom, Andreessen Horowitz, and many other great organizations. So I'm very excited about the potential of uh, blockchain to actually have an impact on the refund space and especially around um, a, a DMRV, the way that we report and measure the actual emissions of companies and how do we bring that data on chain. You stole two of my ideas already, so I have to come up with something new. Um, um, yeah, by the way, uh, social impact, if any of you are thinking to build a project that's connected to social impact, definitely Celo would be probably the protocol of choice to consider that. But as far as, you know, projects we're working with and what we're seeing, well, on the tech side of the house, more of an observation, like personally, I think we have too many protocols already. Like, I don't think we need to create new chains and for some of these chains to come with new languages, right? Because we keep raising the technical barrier of entry for new founders to build projects. So that's more of a maybe personal observation than, than anything, but that's something that we're gonna see more consolidation around blockchain protocols in the future. As far as trend, um, we're working with a number of a fairly large company around everything around proof of authenticity so that that can take different you know shape or form so you know I'm a big sneakers guys you can tell but you know buying sneakers fitness seekers sometimes you don't really know where they come from or if they are the real product um, a lot of car manufacturers as well we're working for some of very large company in terms of providing certificate when you buy a car um, it might not mean much for some of us that lives in the States or in Europe, but for half of 
the word, proving that it is actually your car when you get pulled away by cops. Surprisingly, it's very hard, it's very paper driven. So there's a lot of fantastic use case that's gonna be extremely useful in, you know, for billions of people um, out there and that's gonna be fantastic. Um, another thing that we're seeing, I think I was overhearing the, the, the gentleman from, from Polygon, right? It's around loyalty and rewards. I mean, it's pretty obvious that, I don't know if it's an American thing, but we are obsessed with like air miles hotel points, I mean, how many credit cards look in your back, you know, and you just try to collect. Whether we feel part of a community by doing that, or we get access to more benefits, blockchain by nature has been built to provide that, that access. You know, I'm, I'm part of a small gym here in Miami. If I go visit my parents in Paris in July for a month, how great it would be for me to lend my membership to someone for, for one month, you know, maybe make money out of it, you know, additional sources of income for a lot of brands and I think increasing their connection with some of the end, end users or end customers. And I think the last trend, or maybe not a, a personal aspiration of mine, you know, we have our great Mayor Suarez here on stage today. You know, if you think about technologically blockchain, you know, a distributed public ledger. I strongly think or hope that this year we should have a concrete use case when it comes to voting. It is literally, ideally, was built for that, right? To see how vote can be transparent and democratized and we can follow actually what's happening so it's extremely transparent. So whether it's happening in the States or in another country, that would be my, not my trend, but maybe yeah, my last aspiration that I want to see happening. All right. Well, thank you, Arno and Alone. How can people get in touch with you? Yeah, so if you uh, have a project idea and you're thinking about uh, launching uh, on Celo, uh, you can uh, reach us uh, at celocamp.com. We would love to uh, connect with you. And uh, you have all the resources over there. We are just launching uh, the next batch of Celo Camp uh, on April. So now is actually the perfect time uh, to apply and to uh, launch a project. Uh, so if you want to learn more about Terum or literally uh, if you want to use our um, tech stack or developer toolings, you go to terum.io, uh, uh, no connection with Magic Mike or, or Channing, but it's spelled the same, T-A-T-U-M.io. Um, obviously, if you're looking for building on Celo, we are a proud partner of this exciting protocol. If you enroll in Celo Camp, there is a high chance that we'll come and coach you on your blockchain development as well. Um, I'm based in Miami, but as well, reach out on Telegram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Fax, if you're still with it. We take everything. Thank you so much. I hope that um, all of you here have gained some uh, great insight on uh, some of the key themes to keep in mind when uh, launching or building a new venture. Um, and thank you so much.